Good morning, good morning, Rye Guy here. We're out again. Today is August 1st. Uh, it's gonna be a hot one. They're saying, well, hot-ish, I guess. 27 degrees with the, uh, with the Humidex. It's like 24 or something like that without it. But if you live in Nova Scotia or know about Nova Scotia, we are a coastal province and it gets humid here. Very humid. So if you're not familiar with what a Humidex is, it it is a measurement of what it actually feels like versus what the temperature actually is. So today we are just shy of Armstrong Lake, uh, Nova Scotia here. And uh, we're going to be heading towards the Chester area, which is around the South Shore. So I haven't done a lot of travel. That way I've always kind of gone north. This time we're going south. So uh, I thank you for joining me on this run. I got my father up ahead. Bruce is leading this run. We got a couple other uh, guests on this run today. I am the only ATV. The rest are all side by side. Big Polaris is in other than my dad's uh, Rhino. So anyway, thanks for joining me on this run. We will see you guys out on the trail. Nice little grassy trail. I'll tell you, I'm not feeling up 24 degrees right now. It is pretty chilly. Half thinking I should pull over to put my sweater on, but then we get out in the sun, then it's then it's warm. I think it was eight degrees this morning when I woke up. Days are getting shorter. But hey, the tire from that last run's holding. Freaking tire slime, A1. Little bit of a bottom out there. access trails like this you gotta watch because it's some hard to see nuggets in the center of the grass you could smack your skid plate pretty good just kind of coast down here Somebody smack a skid plate. We'll lock in the front sneakers. You know, I keep saying that Rhino is not fast by any means, but it is a absolute tank. a good smack oh yeah now I see why he couldn't go over there Think about the torque load on all the axles doing that kind of stuff. Or this kind of stuff. I guess I'm doing it too. And that thing doesn't have power steering either.
Low and slow. Hear those tires biting. Nuggets here. Now I'm feeling that 24 degrees. Took my goggles down. It's a, uh, it's a little tight. I can tell you, I know you can't smell what I'm smelling right now, but it's uh, it's just burnt swamp. Just black organic mud. get on an open trail like this after working your body and working the bike in the tight Rockies. Swampy. We get a lot of this type of terrain in Nova Scotia if you're ever four-wheeling or uh, jeeping or anything like that. This is just like it's not muskeg, it's like, I don't know, meatballs and gravy. It's big old chunky rocks and mostly granite. You can see the shine in the rocks here. And uh, black mud. Meatballs and gravy. Good year for growing stuff, Bruce is saying. I mean, look at all the growth that happened hot weather and uh, we had more rain stretched out over the summer so far as we did last summer because we had we had quite a drought last summer but uh, good year for growing anything I say growing weeds but that means a different thing now That's the steepness of this right now, by the way. I'm pretty sure I've been on this trail before. I gotta check my GPS, but I'm pretty sure we've gone through this trail before, but in the winter time. these trails I have not been on before that went right across my neck and some I have not um, we're kind of doing a connector of all the trails to get down to the south shore
got to pick your way through these choppings because when they do deforestation practices, or I don't know what you want to call it, just it's general logging really, uh, and they clear out areas like this, well, A, the brush grows up from underneath, so you can't really see anything off the trail, and B, all these little tiny sticks and stuff like that that you're running over will jam in every possible spot on your ATV or side by side. I think he's in the right spot. I think he's in the right spot. Yeah. Look all the wild blueberries. Look. Well, you'll kill a bunch of blueberries, but you can back up and turn hard left into that area there. I wonder when they, where he went though. How far back he turned? I don't know. I don't know. Crunch goes the fender. Concentrate on what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be in the high side. Sudden stop back there, Dad had a stick that was jamming against a throttle cable. That could have been bad coming through here. Never smell raspberries here. Holy, look at all that. Wow. Lots of raspberries. I think the temperature is about 147 degrees. Whew, what a workout. I'm sweating. Old shower is going to feel good tonight. Out of the sun, that feels better. We're going to the beach. It's the beach episode. Parking in the shade.
No, go for it. He doesn't float. Oh, the water is warm. Oh, I bet. Oh. This could be Timberlake. I'm pretty sure this is Timberlake. Might say on my GPS, too. This is officer's camp here. He looks like a fun fellow. You got that on GoPro? On what? This? This, yeah. I couldn't figure out where we were, but then I just realized we passed a little sign that said paintball. I used to come here a lot as a kid. This is Mercy Road right here. That's Mercy Road paintball. We're going to come up to a tunnel here shortly. There it is. Called it. I haven't been down this way for years. This is actually, this evil jersey that I'm wearing now is uh, from when I used to play paintball a little bit competitively. How can you not do that inside of a tunnel? More clear cutting. Yay. Nova Scotia needs forestry. I agree. That's pretty painful to see though. And if anybody can answer me, if anybody logs, why do they leave really tall trees like that? Just out in the open. Is there a point to it? Uh, did they do environmental assessments to see about like nesting birds or something? I, I have no idea. So if somebody maybe in the comments can let me know why they leave random tall trees around like that. My suspicion is it's for the birds, but I don't know. weekend for some, not for all. I gotta go back to work tomorrow. Wow. Look at that shared use trail sign that, that's what drives me nuts about some bikers and walkers and hikers and stuff like that. This is a, this is a mixed use trail. means everybody can use it. And we pay to use it, in fact, because we pay into the infrastructure fund that uh, does the maintenance, that distributes funds to the clubs down this area to do maintenance. Hikers and 
bikers on these narrow little trails. Some people took their mountain bike through here, could see the tracks in the mud. I used to do quite a bit of that when I was younger, mountain biking. Now, uh, I got a bit more weight on me here now. I don't, want to, I don't think I can do it now. Hello. That's what ground clearance does right there. Could have dropped straight down that, I suppose. Wow. There is some there. <laughs> There's some interesting trails here. going down there. <laughs> It'll be uh, a quick trip to the bottom. Uh, yeah. And probably a bear roll. Quite the look off. What is it? As if I wasn't hot enough, let's go for a hike. Right, with a helmet on. Hey, I got a recording myself and show everybody how out of shape I am. After a 37 and a half point turn, we made her out. Well, we turned around anyway, we're not out yet. There's only one trail in, one trail out for ATVs. You want to just go winch to winch? Yes, you come straight in. Okay, you're up against it. Okay. Now you just fell back in where you're at. You're that's a bad angle for those CV joints. Now you need to be pulled forward. And we need to go, we need to get forward. Hang on.
I ain't moving that. What? I ain't moving that. Okay, hang on. You're still, your frame is still hung up on the log. Well, that was 25 minutes. Whew. Stump stuck between the A arm, the wheel, and the front of the frame. We winched forward, we winched backwards, we broke Dad's winch. Well, we broke the winch cable. And, uh, after that, it took three of us to get on the back side of that thing, lift it up onto the stump, and then slide the stump on the belly pan. Goat Lake Bridge. That must be Goat Lake. We must be, <laughs> we must be close to the South Shore because the air smells different. It smells salty. I don't know if a lot of my viewers are from here. I look at the statistics sometimes of where people are watching from, and a lot are over in like Europe. I got more European and American viewers than I do actually Canadian viewers, which is strange, I guess. Maybe this is a normal thing across Canada. I don't know, but anyway, I sometimes get comments of, how does the air smell different? Well, it does, because if you've ever been to a beach with seaweed in it, it smells salty. And this is, we're along the Atlantic, uh, Atlantic coast here, the Atlantic Ocean. So it's very cold, very, uh, very full of uh, vegetation, salt water, lots of uh, clam fishing, um, oyster fishing, cod fishing, all kinds of lobster fish. Lobster's huge here, so if you like lobster, come to Nova Scotia. That gate is so tight that they can't fit through. If you're wondering what those gates are, they're the same gates as what you find out in the Rouse Trails out home. Uh, they are width restrictors. So that a side-by-side -side past a certain width uh, that I guess the residents or the trail committee deems as unsafe or too wide to be on the trail. They put those gates up at a certain width so that they can't pass by. Uh, information center yeah I guess it is oh dad had to actually gas up he was almost completely out of gas at around 75 kilometers not fast and it's very thirsty this is alongside the 103 highway Forest Heights Community School That's a steep driveway. Right on. It's a cute little camp. 
kind of badly. Ryan, you've been in here before, haven't you? Where's here? <laughs> We're on Hog Lot Road. We're almost to Cana. Cana Cana's right over there. I think I've been on this road before. I've never done that little trail there before. That's nice, eh? Yeah. That's a nice secret little trail. Yeah? Yeah. Now we're now we're on Hog Lot Road. Canaan Canaan is straight across. Okay. Okay. definitely wrong before now we're in New Ross so we're still trying to make it to the restaurant uh, Vittles which I think you've seen me go there before pretty sure I have a video of it but uh, fuel some of us need fuel I've got a gallon with me and that should get me back but it's just nice to have a have a topped up tank so there is a fuel station that closes at 5. I don't even know what time it is because the clock on this thing changes every time I turn the key. My other Grizzly was like that too. I don't know why. It's been a roller coaster of rock crawls here. I think Dad's the lowest ground clearance here. It's been having some issues. I mean, back when those rhinos were, you know, rhinos were developed, they were a fire machine, basically, like a utility thing that you could take in, in the trails. But all these high clearance trailing arms. You know, 22 inches of suspension, side-by-sides that are out there, it's just, it's kind of obsolete. But she still gets through the trails. Vittles, great little spot to eat. We just had there, uh, just had supper there. It's about 6.30 now, 6.45 maybe? Anyway, I'll be home by dark. <laughs> That up. We're pretty far back around Wallaback Lake right now. Past New Ross. Headed back towards Highway 14 to go back to Armstrong Lake. And the sun is setting. Beautiful evening though. Too bad I gotta go back to work tomorrow. Stay on the 101 snowmobile trail. It is dusty. Uh, 
that and we bypassed that we tried to take a shortcut to get to the 101 trail but it's blocked off because they've been doing clear cutting lost another trail surpassed the 150 kilometer mark I don't think it'll be a record breaking run but certainly be close I get up to the top of this uh, this pole here and I'll turn around and see if I can see the sunset Deep. Come on, tires. Wow. Pretty cool. I think nobody's been on this trail in a while. Whoa. Now that jam in the gut. Yeah, two wheel drive would have done it, but whatever. Woo, get over. Come on. GPS switched over to night mode. I got my headlights on and we're just about back to Armstrong Lake. So I'm gonna call the video here and um, wow, that was a long run. By the time we get back, it's gonna be about 175 clicks. And uh, yeah, good adventure. I'm gonna be sore tomorrow. I gotta work tomorrow. So I gotta wake up at about 5.45, 6 o'clock. So. Anyway, thank you all for joining me on this run. My name is RyeGuy8888. If you like these kinds of videos, please do like, comment, subscribe. It does help my channel grow. And we'll see you guys on the next run. RyeGuy out. I'm coming for the throne. So you wanna be my enemy You should've known I'd never kiss the rain